why Russia is winning and America is losing. Right now, we are going through a very pivotal moment in history. We are actually seeing a major war that America has spent billions of dollars on. Absolutely ridiculous. This war in Ukraine has been going on since 2014. And we are watching the fact that America is losing. And for a while I've been saying that Ukraine has taken serious, massive losses. And I've been getting people in the comments, probably military people from here in America, and they're saying, that's nonsense, nonsense. You know, it's Russia that's losing all the people. Russia's the one that's failing. The Russians, they're, they're using outdated weapons, and they can't, they don't know how to fight and whatever else. And now you have Zelensky coming out, and he's, you know, We've lost a lot of men and had lots of wounded and we can't keep this going anymore. <laughs> yeah, because you see, Russia is stepping up the war effort and they're slaughtering. I just saw yesterday it was 13,000 um, dead Ukrainian soldiers in a week uh, because of the Russians really upping the battle tactics. 13,000 in a week. I mean, that is pretty drastic. But... I'm going to give you the, the scientific reason why Russia is prospering. And then I'm going to give you the spiritual reason why Russia is prospering. Um, the physical, the, the scientific reason is because Russia allowed their economy to collapse years ago. I think it was back in the, in the early 2000s or something around that area. And um, every economy has to crash if you're using fiat currency. If you're using gold and silver, well, that stays stable. Um, and you can use gold and silver for just a huge amount of time, but the point is then there's no inflation and there's only a limited amount. So you can't really lend it out and whatever else, technically. You can't lend it out in huge amounts that's not there backed up by gold and silver. I'll say it that way. And so gold and silver limits how much money a country has. You can always mine it, you can you know, barter for other things and whatever else, but um, it stabilizes the economy when you use gold and silver. But when you print money, well, you know, you're limited by how much ink and paper you have. And uh, as long as people don't call in the gold and silver that's supposedly backing your paper currency, well, you know, the scam works. And then, of course, you have banks that are lending money out, which they're just giving pieces of paper saying, we lent this person, you know, $200,000 to buy this house. And there's no physical paper even backing that. So uh, America's in a huge financial problem. You know the reason why? Because we didn't let the country crash. The economy has just been propped up and propped up and propped up, which makes the problem get worse. You hyperinflate your currency when you do that. You have to have a bull and bear markets. It has to go up and it has to come down. And if you don't do that, then you'll have problems. Well, America has been pushing off of this crash while Russia has been going through crashes and their people aren't making as much money and whatever as Americans, you know, per se, but understand what money is. It's, you know, the currency here in America, it's not actual real money. So all Americans have such a high living standard. Uh, actually, it's a high debt standard, all right? It's not really a good living. It's a huge debt problem, all right? Some spiritual things coming up here. But you see, that's the real problem with what's going on. So Russia right now, they actually have, were just uh, um, said to be increasing in wealth, um, whereas America is decreasing in wealth. Americans standards of, of living are starting to collapse people can't pay their bills They're having to use buy now pay later loans to purchase food That's not good a lot of people are stuck in houses that they can't afford their house poor um, I've told this story before but there was a at the grocery store the one day and there was an older man there And he was talking about how that he won't be he said I have to get food for my cat and he said I can't afford to eat so his pet is going to be eating, but he won't be that night. And um, how many times is that being repeated throughout the country? Uh, I'm seeing people having serious financial problems. And yet the media just keeps saying, oh, everything's fine. Well, uh, that's not the case over in Russia. 
Over in Russia, their economy is far better than ours, even though we've sanctioned them. Um, sanctioning Russia actually made them stronger. Um, hey, we're going to cut you off from us. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> and now Russia's saying we're going to make this BRICS currency and, and everything else. Um, they're doing quite well. But why are they doing well? Because the Russian government allowed their people to suffer. Hmm. If there's no suffering in a country, the people become apathetic and pathetic, and they become just rather evil. And that's what's happened here in America. We've had all this time of, oh, prosperity and everything, which is actually just debt-based. It's not real pros prosperity. And just money being thrown at the American people. Um, 2019, things were crashing here with the economy in America. House prices were going down. Um, it was looking pretty grim. And so what did they do? Well, we had a pandemic and we told everybody to stay home and then we printed money and gave it to the American people. Um, that's not good. Okay, the, you're just kicking the problem down the road a little bit further. Well, guess what? We're down the road now. And now we're going to have some major problems. And now the Federal Reserve is in this panicked mode where they're being told you need to lower interest rates and they're thinking if we do, inflation's just going to go like a rocket ship. And so what do we do? It's a problem. And if they raise interest rates, then you have to have, uh, I think it's $350 billion for every 1% of interest rate that you raise, that you have to you know, have $350 billion to pay on that debt. Um, it, it's just incredible. I saw a thing yesterday at the usdebtclock.org where the um, uh, derivatives, the, the, what is it, the currency and credit derivatives in other words, loans that have not been paid off um, is $627 trillion. $627 trillion uh, for people that have not paid off their loans. Uh, you talk about a, just an inconceivable number. I mean, the national debt is about ready to tip over to $35 trillion. And yet the consumer credit derivative thing Again, you can look it up. You can see it for yourself. $627 trillion. Um, that's a problem. All right? So uh, why do you think Russia's succeeding? Uh, because they're not dying in debt. I don't even think they have $1 trillion worth of national debt. Whereas America, it's, you know, almost $35 trillion national debt. But the, you know, currency and, and or, uh, credit and currency derivatives thing, 627 trillion. And look at all the other debts and things and all the other money issues at the usdebtclock.org. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. We're going to beat Russia though, don't worry. And uh, most of our factories have been shipped overseas. There's no way we can win a long protracted war. We can't. And so Americans have to come to the place where they start to realize uh, it's over for this nation. That's a hard thing. It's a very difficult thing. But we're going, going to be seeing that coming up here. You know, Trump comes out and, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, negotiate with Putin. We'll, we'll get this war thing worked out. What do you have that Putin would even want? <laughs> you know, hey, Putin, we'll, how about some American debt? We'll give you, we have plenty of that, you know. Um, we'll just uh, trade you some land here in America. And Why? Russia, their continent dwarfs that of North America. Uh, we'll give you a bunch of old worn out factories or something or whatever else. A whole bunch of uh, mortgage backed securities that are owned by Americans that will never pay for them. I mean, how many people do you think right now with mortgages, um, how many of them uh, even have plans to pay it off? Will even be around in 30 years to pay it off. You know, with their 30 year mortgage I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> it's a problem. It's a big problem. And uh, people don't want to talk about this. And you see, it's a parallel into the spiritual realm. Because there's a lot of people that profess to be Christians, and yet they've never been born again. They've never had to suffer. You see, they've never had a broken, contrite spirit. A understanding of their sin and how bad it has been. And how wrong it was for them to sin. And I've offended God. I've sinned against God sinned against heaven 
oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. No, they just go to some church building someplace and they, they hear some beautiful concert and Jesus died for your sins. And, and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior and you want to go to heaven when you die, bow your head and please pray these words. You know, and they pray, there, oh God, please have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh God, please have mercy on me, a sinner. Yeah, they repeat them, you know. And I now accept Jesus as my Savior and I want to go to heaven when I die. You know, and they go through the whole thing and and they come out, friend, if you've prayed that prayer today for the first time, then I can tell you that you're going to go to heaven when you die. Please make sure to leave some money in the offering plate afterwards so we can pay our mortgage uh, because we can barely do it. Uh, you know. uh, and um, what happens is you have people that make a false profession and they don't deal with their actual problems. They don't deal with their heart condition. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? They don't say, I'm a sinner. I, I, it, and there's no changed life. See, they're not born again. And, you know, there's people out there, hyper dispensationalists, they'll say, being born again is not for a Christian. Yes, it is. I have the study to prove that. But it's a very interesting parallel between what's going on with Russia and America right now and what goes on with false Christians and real Christians. Um... And, you know, morally speaking, by the way, too, Russia's actually defending traditional family values. You know, uh, a man and a woman getting married and having children, that leads to a strong nation. Uh, men and men and women and w women and non-binaries and um, people identifying as uh, Pokemon or, you know, Teletubbies or dogs, cats, elephants, you know, snakes, whatever. Um, yeah, that doesn't produce children. And you keep doing that after a few generations, you don't have any people left. Knock, knock, is anybody home? Um, it takes a man and a woman to produce a child. All right? Well, no, we can go down to the local lab and they can, you know, um, give us uh, the thing in, in vitro fertilization thing and, and I don't need a man in my life or whatever some of these feminazis say. Uh, you still need a man to donate the sperm to the place there. Uh, well, I, okay, but I don't need a, a man to raise the child or whatever. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You know why? Because the Bible said so and because common sense says so. Um, I mean, how many scientific studies have to be done? How much, how much has to be proven to show that you need a husband and a wife to produce children and the husband and wife should stay together to produce a strong family? Oh, well, we're going to do it differently. Well, America's been doing it differently and that's why we're in the condition that we're in. You kick out the Bible, you say, I don't, don't want anything to do with God, and then you wonder why the nation's falling. Oh, I don't agree. I think America's doing very well. I think America's just fine. Well, then you're a very foolish person, is what you are. Very foolish. And you're going to get to see uh, the fruit of this nation as this nation collapses. And uh, again, I hope it collapses this year. Um, quite frankly, I don't think we're even going to make it to the election this year. Um, obviously Biden is not capable of running. There's all kinds of issues there. And, you know, the only other option is Trump. Okay. Uh, well, we're, we're going to get a good Democrat to come in here and what it, they're not going to give us any choices. Uh, again, study the, the Jesuit order. You need to look into that and uh, realize that these people are all trained by Jesuits. Uh, Trump was trained at Fordham University, a Jesuit school. Biden, I don't think he was trained by Jesuits, but he's gotten you know, awards from the Jesuits and things. Um, they send their children to Jesuit schools. Uh, again, look at what the Jesuits do to countries. Why have different nations kicked out the Jesuits and banned the Jesuits? You know, and you just go down through and you look at all the different people that were uh, trained by Jesuits that are part of the government structure right now in America. It's a problem. We have a major problem. And this nation's going to fall. But you know what? It needs to fall. Um, don't fight that. Don't, oh God, please preserve America. Um, no, you need to fall. Russia fell back years ago and the economy crashes and then you build out of the economy. The people that don't deserve to have money lose everything. The people that deserve to have money that are hardworking, they actually prosper when things fall apart. Because now the, the dumb people that couldn't, you know, didn't have the sense to, uh, maintain their finances correctly, those dumb people, they lose everything and the good people buy it up. 
that's just the way it is. That's just, again, a scientific fact. So, um, I do these videos to try to wake some people up out there. And I want you to understand if you're an atheist or whatever else, again, look at things scientifically. Divorce your emotions from it. I'm not talking about Christianity right now. I'm just simply saying the thing of what's going on in our country. America is, is falling and falling very fast. And look at the scientific reasons for it. It's because in a free market, you have to have crashes and you have to have building out of the crash. And if you don't do that, if you say, let's step in and let's keep, you know, during the pandemic, all these people couldn't make their house payments. So let's step in and say, we'll do it. Well, you can put your house in forbearance. We'll do a debt moratorium. You don't have to pay it off. And what, that's a problem. You're making the problem worse. Foreclosed homes coming onto the market would have meant cheaper homes for people. The right people would have come along and said, hey, I'm going to buy that foreclosed home. I'm going to fix it up. Even fix it up and sell it or whatever else. It's good for the economy. Well, no, let's, let's uh, do student uh, debt forgiveness and let's have all these other uh, debt things. It's, after all, I mean, you got yourself into debt, but it's not your fault, really. It, and again, swinging back to the spiritual, it's exactly paralleling what goes on in the churches. Well, let's not talk about sin. Let's come here and have a Sunday celebration. Let's talk about how good Jesus is and how God is love. Oh, uh, yes, God is love, but God is also hatred. Our God is a consuming fire, the Bible says. God is angry with the wicked every day. You know, oh, we just won't look at those verses. We'll look at the stuff about God's love. Um, God's love was manifested at Calvary. Don't ever forget that. God's love is not there for you if you reject Calvary. If you reject that Jesus died, God manifest in the flesh, died on the cross to pay for your sins. If you reject that, then God's love isn't there for you. You need to understand that. So, um, where are we going from here? Well, there's a chance that there could be an early election. I'm hearing some talk about that in my research, uh, that they could say, well, you know, we need to do something about this war in Ukraine. We need to, we're going to lose this position that we've been fighting for all this time. You know, NATO's been trying to crowd into and take over Russia. And um, it's not going good. You have different NATO leaders that are now meeting with Putin. Uh, they were trying to isolate Putin. Um, and that's not working. Now North Korea is joining with uh, Russia. And China's starting to ste step up and say, okay, we'll take a stronger stand in, as well as India. And, and you have different countries. Vietnam, which is, I think, a, actually in NATO. And they met with Putin. And now Zelensky, oh, you know, I'm ready to start meeting with Putin. Yeah, I bet you are. You lose 13,000 men in a, in a week, um, you're going to be ready to meet with Putin. And so America is losing right now because America played a game. And that game was, we're not going to crash. We are going to continue living in sin, living a, a very wicked, uh, in a very wicked way. And we're going to reject God and say, we're going to go our own way. While Russia says, um, you know what? We're going to go from an atheistic, communistic system to now more of an open society where we don't persecute Christians. And Putin said, I, you know, he's personally said that he's gone from being an atheist to now he believes in God. Uh, well, that doesn't mean he's a Christian. I, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I understand that. I understand it more than a lot of people. But what I'm saying is... Um, for a, la a nation's leader to come out and defend God and Christianity and, and traditional family values, that nation will prosper. And especially when it's dealing with a nation like America, where the leaders are coming out and saying, we're just rejecting everything that has to do with the Bible. And we're going to go with this woke culture, and we're, we'll start to persecute Christians. We'll say that you should be put in prison for hate crimes if you speak against people's uh, sexual perversion. Not going to go well for America. So uh, what are my plans? Well, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to defend the country that I was raised in. Um, the country that's been taken away from me, that I had no part in. I had no part in this thing of uh, voting for anything that's going on. I didn't say that I was okay with the uh, sodomite marriage stuff and, and all these other things that have torn this nation down. I didn't say that I was okay with the pandemic stuff that they did or the uh, quantitative easing and all this other stuff. I wasn't okay with that. 
I've been protesting it as best as I can, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. And I will live in this country, and I will die in this country if that's what God wants. Um, I'm fully prepared for that. Um, but I will not compromise. It's not happening. I will stand for the truth, uh, no matter what it costs me. And I hope that you do the same. So that will be it. Video links here at the end that you can watch different studies and different sermons and things that will explain things better from the scriptures. Again, this is just a walk and talk. I'm just giving a basic understanding of uh, biblical concepts. But uh, please watch the actual sermons at the end. It will make more sense that way. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. Stand out there. If you're a Christian, you need to stand on the word of God. If you're an American and you say, I, I'm not a Christian, but I'm I agree with you on a lot of things. Okay, then stand for this country. Stand up. Do not give in to this uh, globalist agenda, this agenda to tear down America. That will be it. Thank you for watching.